guys, and welcome to Summer Lunch Break, a show where we chow down on all things wakeboarding. Today, we sit down with the man, the myth, the legend, Sean Murray. Sean talks with us about his career path in the wakeboarding world, what it's like training and competing for American Ninja Warrior, and answers a very special guest question from his old pal, Rusty Malinowski. So grab your lunch, kick your feet up and relax, it's Sean Murray. You know what I'm really scared about is if the wakeboarders get too close to shore, they may use some people on the shore as, as bonking items. Hey, well, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. What my first question of the day is going to be is what you have for lunch. Well, being that uh, here, uh, it's actually after lunch. Um, so this is my snack. And I, and I know we can, Perfect. Um, but this is, this is kind of like an average snack for me. Uh, we've got two, it's a two part thing. And uh, so I have some homemade chicken cutlets and we'll talk about the plate that it's on here. Uh, my mom, my mom on Mondays, uh, my parents live down the street from us and uh, my kids are off at cheer right now. And so she brings in a lunch and it's awesome. Mm. So on Mondays, my mom supplies that. This is a lemon from my lemon tree outside, you know, being in Florida. Um, so this is a kind of an Italian thing. It's a, a chicken cutlet, but we're going to do something here. I'll give you guys a better view. This is a little hack. Amazing. All right, so bear with me while I get this lined up. Oh, check that right out. About there. How's that? Full scope view. I love it. Okay, cool. So um, you can see my to-do list over here. Um, and then I love an apple. Mm -hmm. And Honeycrisp is my favorite. Um, Mine too. And, uh, and then some peanut butter. I'm going to show you my, my apple hack that I'll show okay. you guys in a little bit. Okay. That's very exciting. I cannot wait um, to see that. So I'm going to be eating, um, snacking. Yeah, just chow down the whole time. I have my, uh, I started eating because it's a little after lunch here too. I have my chicken teriyaki with me today. Nice. It's getting a little cold, but I'm still going to eat it anyway. Okay, cool. But yeah, I, we'll chow I, down and uh, cool. chat it out. Cool, cool. Okay, we are going to start from the very beginning and ask you some of the most more standard questions but a lot of people probably want to know how you got into wakeboarding um i grew up in southern california and we were water skiing um at a pretty young age some friends had a boat they took us out thought it was pretty cool um and around eight years old um my dad had gotten a boat and so it came with some skis and my skis are called Captain Kids. <laughs> they were the Captain Kids. <laughs> oh. I remember that. Um, I had these like little pirates on them. So did that and started to water ski a lot more. At the same time, uh, my dad had a, a, um, a long commute um, from Southern California up to LAX. And then he would fly to St. Louis because he was a pilot for TWA. It was an older airline that uh, kind of got bought up by American. Um, and so we eventually moved to St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, when we moved there, we moved onto a lake. So it went from like being on the water, not as often um, to in my backyard. And so that was, uh, California was my elementary school years and uh, St. Louis my, was middle school, high school. And then came time to go to college. And I found out that if you went to college in Florida and come to find out it's actually more states than Florida, but if you went to college in Florida, you could be on a water ski team. I'm going to Florida. That's what For I did. For sure. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, kind of got into that. Um, and then how I got uh, into professional writing, um, there's a little bit more of a history to that. And I don't want to jump ahead. So. You're okay. I was going to ask, uh, going into that, kind of when did it click that you were making kind of more of a significant mark in the in the wake water ski world you know when did you know that it was more than just a hobby and it was a potential career 
Um, it kind of escalated quickly once I made the decision to do it, but me making the decision to go into professional writing, that was when I was in college. So like I'm in year one and in the summer I would go uh, teach at a water ski school. Cool. And so I was ski boarding then, that's what it kind of was called. Um, when it was more of a directional board and it started to become called wakeboarding because um, I went to coach kneeboarding and ski boarding at the ski school. So that was my summer in between my first and second year of college. And so while I was there, there was a contest that was down the road from the ski school that I worked at. And I went to it. I did okay the first day, not great the second day, but as I was leaving the parking lot, this guy comes up to me and introduces himself as the editor of Wakeboard Magazine. He's like, hey, what's up? My name's Tom James. I'm the editor of Wakeboard Magazine. You're good. You should go ride the pro tour. I'm like, whoa that's crazy to hear like i was just kind of like doing this and this guy thinks i can go do that thing that i see on tv so i told my dad and we started to travel around on the tour and it was about five or six stops into it that i made it into the finals and it was in portland oregon and mm -hmm. and uh the guys from hyperlight came up and introduced themselves and they said we want to sign you okay so the next yeah, weekend what <laughs> I was in Seattle and uh, that was 1995 and, and I signed a contract with Hyperlight. So there I was at the end of my um, first summer after college, going back into college for my third semester. So now I picked up Hyperlight as a sponsor. I'm going into college. I was training for Worlds, which was coming up that fall. And I was kind of struggling to do both school and getting ready to ride for this big oh. contest, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I can smell this lemon. It's really delicious. I'm going to take a bite. And <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> you so, um, it was kind of like a struggle to do both. And so I told my dad at the end of that semester, I was like, Hey, can I take a like time off school? I think I could make a go at it. You know, this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. And he said, yes, but we're going to write down goals. And if you don't, achieve those goals then you're right back into school the next fall you get one semester and one Ooh, season pressure <laughs> and, it, and it was but at the same time i was like fair enough let's see what happens like let's see if, it, if i can make a go and it went better than i thought for sure and so um got to the end of that season i was like well let's let's give it another shot and at that point i was renting a room with some other riders and uh it was, uh, I don't know, like two years into it, I was like, oh, I'm not rushing to go back to school anytime soon. So <laughs> it was probably about 1997 that things were going way better than I anticipated. Yeah. So that's the long answer. The uh, long answer? <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I guess, is there a specific moment that you, that has kind of stuck with you that you're like, that's when I knew? No. Honestly, no, because it was really more of like, I don't know if you call it like a, a, a frog or a lobster in boiling water where it's just kind of just this slow, like thing that's just happening. For example, I've had 26, 25, I don't know, like 25 pro models, but I've nowhere near kept all of them Great. because I didn't know it was happening. Yeah. Right? You get your first pro model and you're like, that's awesome. Right. And that was in 1997. This is sick. Like two years into it and I've got a pro model. Mm -hmm. This is way unexpected. This is really cool. And so then 98 comes around and I'm getting another one. I'm like, Oh, here's a new one. And my old one, like it, I kind of kept it, but um, like as the years go on in 99 and 2000, when the new board comes out, I didn't always make sure that I kept an old one because yeah. like, you give it to a friend or a break oh. or whatever, right? And so it's to say I didn't like see these things like happening. It wasn't mm -hmm. like it's just this kind of slow process. Um, but to think back at a moment where it was like, whoa, I'm really making a go at it. Um, maybe when I decided to start looking at homes in Orlando to move mm -hmm. out of, I was living like an hour south of Orlando, okay. and that's where I was at school. Mm -hmm. And then it was like well, maybe I should look at buying a house instead of just throwing money at rent every month. And yeah. So that was a big move. Yeah. Totally. 
Totally. Well, all right. I guess I'll jump forward a little bit and just, you know, I mean, you, the photos, magazine, you know, video parts, magazines, like the contest you participated in, the coaching you do, you do all these things. A question I have is kind of like, what kind of wakeboarder would you consider yourself? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I mean, for years I was, I would kind of consider myself a contest writer, mm -hmm. but I was still coaching. But I was still doing video parts. And it was like most people were, were doing more, like if you were a contest writer, you were a contest writer. And if you were a free writer, you were a free writer. And there weren't too many people crossing the lines as much, but some of us were, like Parks. Um, and forgive me, there's going to be a bunch of guys that, that competed really well that also put together really good video parts. But um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's tons of guys who, who did that, but I wouldn't like, I don't know. At this point, I'm, uh, I'm a fun rider, like, and I'm not even an entirely a wakeboarder. Wakeboarding is something that I do, and it's mostly what I do, and it's what I'm most comfortable doing, but I also like barefooting. I also like slalom skiing, not great or by any means. Um, I like trying to ride random things in the water that aren't meant to be ridden. Um, so I, I really like to just, I don't know, a waterman. Um, I like to surf. I like to do whatever, you know, I just like to, yeah. I like to, uh, have fun. Totally. What's the craziest thing you think that you've ridden on the water? Mm. Cause I saw the other day you wrote a cutting board. <laughs> that was one of the more difficult ones. I bet. Yeah. Um, cause it was such like little surface area, but it, I got up, um, on it easier only because I had ridden what I called the ply board is where I had this random piece of plywood from my shop and I bolted boots to it. And I, so I had to figure out all these new ways of getting up on things because you, know, you I don't know, it hasn't been done. So yeah. that was, um, tricky to ride. One thing I tried to ride that not many people saw because it was from a while ago, my social media was I tried to ride a backboard, you know, like something they'll have it at, um, to like strap somebody who's injured. So we, oh. a, we had a backboard on the shore and it's one of those big orange plastic things. Yeah. Didn't work at all. Mm -hmm. Like had so many holes and handles and things on it. I was like, I am 98% sure I'm not going to be able to do this, but that 2% means that I'm going to try. <laughs> so, didn't work. Didn't work. <laughs> that one did not work. No. Um, I rode a, uh, it was probably like a 10 foot oar. And that's on my YouTube channel. Um, we went, we were at the summer camp up in New York and we rode a bunch of random things like refrigerator doors and pieces, wild. Of, pieces of wood. But it was this, not just like a paddle, not like a paddle like this. It was like an oar that was crazy oh long. God. That, that, yes, that was probably one of the most difficult things that I've ridden. How many tries did it take? for you to get going on it? Um, it was a good like four or five and I was just dying because it was the last thing that I rode. <laughs> um, I rode a headboard from a, from a, like a bed. So it's you just must look at random objects and be like, that'll work. <laughs> Absolutely. And almost every time I'm in the store, I'm looking for things. <laughs> That's awesome. Getting... Do you have anything yeah. planned that's coming up next you're going to try? Oh yeah. Okay. We'll keep it a secret though. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. <laughs> Let's just say I have um, two skateboard decks and two water ski bindings in my shop that I'm going to figure out how to put those together. Okay. And I, and I don't know if this one's ever going to happen, but I do have an old school tandem bike, like an old Schwinn. That, <laughs> I don't know how it's going to happen, but I, it's got to happen somehow. But it's for sure. Well, yeah, you can't just let it sit in the garage. No. <laughs> Leading into my next question, kind of, I feel like I've gotten an answer and you, you are kind of that fun, just on the water type of guy, but is there a specific aspect that you really enjoy the most about wakeboarding? Um, I like the variety that it can be one day it's about calm water. One day it's about a really technical hard trick. One day it's about, I don't know, setting some kind of challenge, like how many different straight airs can I do? How many different 180s can I do? Like there's all these things that you can set. So I like the variety of it. Yeah. Um, I also like the weightlessness. 
um, and the rhythm of it. You know, being that you're on this pendulum, you know, it, it's kind of like, it's almost like a dance like that. It has like this flow and feeling to it. Yeah. And um, so I like the variety. I like the rhythm. And um, yeah, weightlessness is, is always fun. That's awesome. I like that answer. Cool. <laughs> Okay, switch gears a little bit. A lot of us here at the shop have been wondering what made you want to get into competing in American Ninja Warrior. I've heard you get asked this question a lot, but I have to ask. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Um, here, I just moved this out of the way so you can see this. You can get these little, this, I'm not evading, avoiding the question, but this is my oldest daughter, Hayden. And you can do art. It's on a piece of paper and then you mail it in and they send you plates. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. So since I was a kid, like I have some from when I was like four years old. I love that. That's awesome. You have, you have a stack in the cabinet like this house. <laughs> so um, it wasn't any, anything that I thought, oh, I'm going to do that. I thought, oh, that would be fun to do. Honestly, I never thought I would do it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I... Uh, I had this feeling one day I was running across my yard and I was had this sensation like I want to run up like an inclined little ramp and then jump to a bar and swing to something else and I wasn't thinking Ninja Warrior I was just thinking I have this feeling like I need to build something it was weird okay. so I, I told um, uh, my buddy Bob Sobin who happened to be living down the street and so we eventually got together and just built that ramp built a bar we swung and then we land on the ground we're like well now what I'm like, well, let's build another bar and then another bar. And then let's do these little kind of two by four rock climbing things. And let's do some monkey bars. And um, it kind of led it like organically grew into this big gym that I have in my backyard. You may have seen it like in some of the videos. Yeah. But it was just something that I was like, I want to swing around and be light on my feet. Because when I go to the zoo and I see monkeys swinging around, I'm swinging around. I want to do that. Right. Like when you see them doing that, who wouldn't want to like to like you may go oh, there's no chance I'm going to do it but I know I'm not going to get to that level but I want to see what I can do so I wanted to get what I call monkey strong so if you look at some of my boards from Hyperlite they heard me say this and they've thrown it into a lot of my products so if you look at my boards some will say monkey strong for a few years and um, so that's what happened and that's how I was working out and I'd been doing it for a few months and one night I'm sitting on the uh, couch and I had my computer on my lap. I was just doing some emails or something. And I, and I look up and see the show come up on TV. And I just Googled it. I was like American Ninja Warrior. And it says, you can apply. Mm -hmm. What? And I sent in this application. The next day I got a phone call from them. And they said, we may have a spot for you. And I'm like, that's awesome. I kept the voicemail on my phone for like months. It was so crazy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I ended up getting a spot on the show. Did make it up to the wall or make it to the top of the wall the first year. I didn't have the right shoes, didn't have the right steps. So I built a wall in my backyard. Mm. Eventually made it to the top of the wall in my backyard. Got a run on the show in Orlando is where I had my best uh, results. And, um, yeah, it was something that just, that too organically grew. Sweet. Was it the experience like overall when you kind of got accepted to the show and then it, did it kind of turn into like a, you're training for this or were you always kind of just like, it is what it is. I'm just going to go for it. Well, like I try to get out there like three, maybe four days a week. Mm -hmm. And when you get close to the show, cause I've done it four times. Um, when you get close to the show, I mean, number one, it's nerve wracking, but yeah. Um, you get one shot. You don't get to touch any obstacles before you go. Like That's what crazy. you see, like you just look at it and you go, I wonder what that feels like. I wonder what that oh, distance, gosh. I wonder if it's solid, stable, slippery, wet. Things will get splashed on. They don't really dry it off. Oh, um, so getting ready for it, um, I sometimes will start doing two a days, but not like how I would normally work out. I'll just try to get through it as fast as I can and then leave it at that like do a lap around my course is what I call it. Just hit every obstacle gotcha. once, keep my intervals Perfect. tight. So as you get close to the show, tighten up the training. Um, but yeah, that was about it. Once in a while, um, I would start training late at night, set lights up out there because when you are on the show, it's really late at night. 
and you oh, don't know okay. that as a viewer you think you're watching it when it's filmed at like seven eight o'clock right <laughs> what is, is that a question about it no matt just popped oh. in really quick i don't think he knew I, we were filming <laughs> tom what's up i'll let him know i think he walked out um so, if you had never if you had never became a pro wakeboarder like what do you think you'd be doing in another life would it be american ninja warrior stuff or would you completely different funny as it sounds i love heavy equipment and tractors i love operating <laughs> big like excavators and th things like that yeah. i don't know i would really want to do that on the daily um at one point i thought it was um like kind of going down the path of being a youth pastor you know, okay. playing some music and like, cause I'll go speak at camps and things like that. Yeah. Um, but the more and more that I've been immersed into wakeboarding and in what I do, I'd probably be involved in marketing because that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. So okay. probably something with that. Something like that. I gotcha. Well, you've covered, I mean, you've covered so much ground in your lifetime in the wakeboarding industry. Is there something you do or certain kind of, tactics you use to find balance in your life to kind of keep you chill and happy and going forward all the time? Um, I try to stay active and um, the times where I'm feeling kind of just overwhelmed or even just kind of like, you know, where you feel kind of gray and black. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I can generally point it to those times where I'm not involved in some sort of activity that I take my body to, I don't want to say exhaustion, um, yeah. but exertion, um, mm -hmm. whether it's like some kind of backyard workout or I just was snowboarding in Utah yesterday, awesome. um, or I like to play ice hockey. Hopefully I get on the ice tomorrow morning, even shooting hoops, cool. um, running, whatever, where, where you do these things and it's not always about this moment, but I know that where, when I'm exercising or doing something physical mm -hmm. and my body says, like stop or slow down and you just push a little bit more like you're yeah. like no not yet like we kind of get that little bit of oomph like how much more can i push myself um i feel like when i do that you're like releasing these endorphins and things that honestly just pour yeah. into the rest of your life so totally. when i'm not doing those things and where i kind of just I'm like mm. well okay we have a guest question from your good friend rusty We'll go ahead and read that now. Guys, okay. I'm curious. So <laughs> I call them dice and I can give you details on that later, but I right, would love to know. Dice. Here we go. What is the very special activity that you and Rusty partake in when you are on hyperlight trips? <laughs> <laughs> There's without a doubt, we go shopping. <laughs> oh, tell us more, about it. More specifically, Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, that's what we hit up. Okay. Do you guys <laughs> he, shop for something he, specific? So he, he didn't tell you that, that. I thought this was maybe like a trivia that was I going to get it right. So he just said to ask that. That is absolutely <laughs> what we do. <laughs> we, we hit him up before we talked with you today, and we said that we need a guest question, and that was mm -hmm. what he said. So what mm -hmm. do you guys shop for? Just anything? Rusty, um, he loves looking at phone cases. Um, we, we, he's just, he loves phone cases, like different phone cases. Like he's generally buying a new phone case on the road. That's so funny. I know. Um, we both will look at shoes. Well, we'll, you know, we'll browse through some of the shirts and the shorts and, um, we bought matching vests at Target once and, and that, like, I was never like a vest guy. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to just go and wear a vest. You're like, what's the point? There's no sleep. <laughs> um, they're surprisingly effective. Like it was, it was really weird. They're really effective. And so we got these black uh, matching vests. <laughs> yeah. I went through a vest phase in middle school. I'm pretty sure I wore a vest every day. Someone finally made a comment and I was like, hmm, I should probably change my outfit. <laughs> well, it was probably a negative comment, which, which actually can have big impacts on us, right? Haters, you were hating on my vest. Not cool. <laughs> it dresses up whatever you have on underneath yeah I, it honestly does I, think, <laughs> I, I actually wore I wore vests in high school a little bit of a bold statement um, it's a statement piece yeah but anyway 
<laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be, gonna begin my Apple hack. I um, would love to see it. Yeah, for sure. But, but uh, yeah, so we shop. That's awesome. When did that start? Was that like a we should do this, or was it like a random? It's been going on for years. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, generally, what happens is, like Rusty and I are dads. Like we're both dads. Mm -hmm. And we don't really like to sit still too much. We're not going to like nap very much or often or ever. Um, <laughs> first and half, then you got to, you core it, but here's the trick. Okay. Gonna, this is a two part question answer. Um, you can do this with like a melon baller even. Don't hurt yourself here, right? So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get the core out, but I also don't want to go too shallow or else you don't leave enough room for peanut butter. I feel like I've tuned into Food Network. <laughs> right? Okay. So here it is. In fact, I'm going to take it just a little bit deeper so we can really, really perfect it. Well, just make sure you got a, a peanut butter base in there. And you'll see why. Okay. Um, so when we're on these trips, everybody else, like we get up early. Like we're generally up before the sun. Okay. And, and we go shooting. Crunchy. I'll go crunchy or creamy. Um, so we're up before the sun and a lot of these are younger guys. And when I come, when we get in, usually around 10, 11 o'clock, maybe noon, people will go, will go eat and then they'll just get on the couch and a lot of them will sleep and, you know, just fall asleep. And Rusty and I are not going to go just sit on the couch. Mm -hmm. So we get in a rental car and we go places. <laughs> <laughs> We go shopping. <laughs> that is great. I love it. We come back with some, and, and, oh, and thrift stores. Thrift stores oh, are Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You guys are like, so uh, if, what's that? I was going to say, you guys are like Macklemore. Oh, does he shop at thrift stores? He's got that song, Thrift Shop. Oh. <laughs> That's us. Um, so you can just, if, it, if you're by yourself, you can just eat it this way, right? Mm -hmm. since, especially since I'm going to be talking, but if you have kids or you want to share. Wow. And this isn't even a very pretty one because this is a massive apple. I will be trying this when I get home. Absolutely. Right. And I, and if like, depending, this one will actually look better. We'll, I'll show you when we get to that point. Um, but it's normally like this pretty little thing that looks like, a Christmas well, presentation is, it makes yeah. everything taste better. Very nice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, thrift stores. I've, I've shopped at thrift stores since I was in high school. All right, we are moving into hot topics. First question is, what is the worst trend in wakeboarding right now? Right now? Right now. See, that would have to come from somebody who's knowledge in like watching things. I'm honestly really bad about looking at social media, at okay. look, looking at anything. Okay. Um, Do you have a trend from previous years that maybe you thought of? I mean, if you want to go way, way back, um, wake pants, those were pretty bad. <laughs> oh um, no. Yeah. And I even wore a pair. Um, it was something that Shane and Shane admittedly was like, Hey, I gave it a shot. It was not a good idea, but yeah, wake pants. That was, that was one. <laughs> hey, but you got to try things like, and that, that's the one thing that, um, if, if I could say the trend and it's been since the beginning, this is just mankind, like criticism, like what's the point? Just do what you want to do. And like, just let other people do what they want to do. If you're, if, if, if I see people who are critical, I think you can kind of generally point it to them. They're concerned about what other people think about them. Yeah. Like, so what if I want to ride this board and do this trick and wear this outfit, whatever, like whatever. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. What about the yeah. best trend? Best trend. Or something, maybe something that's got you kind of excited about the sport. Um, you know, what, what I think is cool and there's going to be some people who are like, like hating on wake surfing because it's like growing so quickly the wake surfing has gotten so many other people that have either decided to hang it up and just drive the boat or thought like, Oh, this isn't for me, like to get into the sport. 
Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's, be, it's really um, opened it to being inclusive. Downside is a lot of the new boats are really expensive. So that part's kind of exclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I encourage people like to know that, yeah, you can go and get these awesome boats, but you don't have to, you don't, like don't have to. Um, yeah. But I do encourage you, if you're going to get a boat, get an Altique, you know, they've been of making course. boats since <laughs> 1925. Okay. My daughter is blowing me up asking for time on Instagram. So one second. Okay. But boats are like holding their value way more than they used to. Yeah. And right now, if you have a boat, you're hanging on to a really valuable asset because everybody wants to buy them. And Altique is sold mm-hmm. out until like September. It's crazy. The shop's yeah. been absolutely crazy. I mean, we have people coming in that, they're like, yeah, you got any, what do you got? And we're like a few options and we're very limited. It's been a crazy, crazy season. Yeah. That's not what we thought was going to happen when a pandemic. <laughs> Absolutely stopped, not. Right? No, I was at school when it happened and I was like, Oh crap. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know? And then boom, it was like, yo, Summer, we need you at the shop. Like if you can come in, I was like, what? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Hyperlight was even like, what are we going to do? Are we going to hang on to 2020? Are we going to do 21? Mm-hmm. And they immediately sold out of stuff. Like, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's Where'd you crazy. go to school? I went to school at Oregon state. Cool. Yeah. It was cool. I did three years there. I got done a year early. Now um, I'm here. Is that the duck? Mm-mm, the beavers. Oh, the beavers. What's the, the ones that are like not good at football. <laughs> I'm so I don't know football whatsoever. So I apologize. No, you're fine. We're not good, so it's okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> we did win the Civil War this year, though, so we beat the Ducks, which was amazing and kind of embarrassing for University of Oregon. <laughs> to lose to us. But, well. Um, All right, next hot topic question. Who do you consider to be the best representative of the sport right now? You know, that's tough to say because when you say the the sport i'm assuming you're talking specifically wakeboarding or wakeboarding. Water sports. yeah wakeboarding is what we're talking about right now um so then like are we talking competitive riding are we talking free riding are we talking social media and what what is social media because like let's say let's say i was like a team manager looking for a somebody who is worth the spend essentially, Mm -hmm. right? Is that kind of what you're thinking? Sure. I mean, if you wanted to divvy it up in like specific groups and you got people in those groups that you would point out specifically, yeah, throw those at us. Um, It's a good question. Um, (laughs) Bless you. Bless you. (laughs) (laughs) You're fine. Um, So it's a good question, but it, it, it also just is like kind of a, I don't want to take you off on too deep of a a rabbit trail, but there's things that people are doing that uh, they do things well, like say like video sections and things like that. I think Trevor Maurer, um, his riding, his free riding, I I like watching him a lot. Totally. Right. Um, I think that um, YouTube, um, David O has been doing a good job for a long time. And now JB O'Neill is obviously putting a ton of effort into it. Um, yes. and, uh, and, and that's where I'm focusing most of my, my time and attention is there. Um, nice. And then you take, say, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, Graham Burris, like he puts a, a, a lot of good content out. Um, and, he, and he's doing YouTube as well. Yeah. And, uh, and I love watching Graham ride, you know, kind of the park, the urban rider. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and I put a lot of time and attention into that as well. Um, and then contest, it's interesting, like contests, I think are still needed and a good, um, outlet for the sport. And we need it mm-hmm. to like push the sport. And it's also a good place for people to connect with the sport and connect with riders, but it's not like it used to be, um, because before the pro tour was where you went to see high end riding, mm-hmm. unless you wanted to wait to see it on TV or to maybe pop up an article in the magazine. Um, mm-hmm. But now you can see it so many places that um, people just don't 
aren't driven out there. And I, I think it's kind of a miss if, if there's a contest near people, go check it out. Like, yeah, you know, we do the, the Nautique events. Um, I know the pro tour does their own events. Um, if there's something near you, like go check it out. They're generally pretty cool. Totally. Um, so, but the, the contests aren't the same as they used to be. So uh, then you also have to have people who aren't just um, able to ride well, but they have to be able to carry a message. And that's what I, I would tell like a lot of the kids or people who are interested in um, like, Hey, I want to get sponsored. Like, remember that the, the reason a company sponsors someone isn't just because they can do tricks and they can check off. Like I can do this, I can do that, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's because they can carry a message of, um, Hey, here's some product I use. Here's some product I have input on. And yeah. I think you'll really enjoy because of this. Mm -hmm. And, um, a lot of kids kind of miss that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they, they think that it's um, about who can have the biggest trick list and who can have the biggest hammer section on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And as much as you want to have that, those numbers up there, it's not the whole thing. So totally, totally. Okay. So I, yeah, that, it, that was circling the drain on that one. <laughs> You're okay. Last hot topic question. Mm -hmm. Who do you, Sean Murray, the legend himself, find inspiration from in or outside of wakeboarding? Number one, it's really like weird to hear that like a legend. Like <laughs> it's weird because I'm just a kid who grew up on the lake, and sometimes I consider myself myself still a kid. I like to play, I like to have fun, but I'm in my mid 40s. I'll be 45 next month, and. Uh, I don't know. It's weird to hear that still it's cool, but it's still surreal. Um, inspiration. It, it can come in all sorts of different shapes and forms. Like it, um, I think one of my biggest inspirations is the feeling of confidence and progression within myself. Um, and that comes from consistency in writing. And what that looks like is me going out and let's say I, I'll, I'll, I can usually get this done in one to two weeks to where if I haven't been writing, like I haven't been writing a ton lately because I just got off a trip and I've been doing some other shoots and different things like that. So if I, um, and, and go back about a month ago, I was writing a lot and I was getting that confidence and feeling what I call connected. Yeah. Um, so that's what is motivating. That's where I find my motivation is within my own confidence going up. And, and that comes from going out and writing like simple and often mm -hmm. and low weight, like maybe short lines, slow speeds, and just going out and kind of changing things up and not just go out there and try to bang out like really hard, big tricks. Totally. So if I do that, like a week, two weeks in a row, all of a sudden I just start to feel strong and that is motivating. Um, sometimes I'll go, and uh watch some other guys ride like i told you like trevor mauer um seeing him ride is always inspiring or, or um uh massey like he's a cool rider to watch and um i mean so many riders i uh, haven't rusty over to to ride he'll go out and you know smack some double ups i'm like i'll go hit some double ups you know so it's different shapes but the biggest is when i'm feeling confident and that just escalates that's awesome. Are you excited to have Rusty on Team Nautique with you? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Very exciting. Yeah. More adventures. Totally. Yeah. More thrift shopping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's see. What are my last questions? Oh, sponsor shout out. I want to give you opportunity to give your sponsors a little plug. Well, um, if you if you want to go to um, my website and I don't want to steer people here away, but I mean, that's kind of what we're doing here talking about this, but if you go to yeah. Sean, Sean Murray.com, you can click sponsors and it'll take you through uh, the list of the, the companies that I've been with. And the majority of the companies that I've been with, I've been with them for over 20 years that's um, crazy. and some are newer. Um, but um, most of them I've been with for a long time. And, and that's what I really like to do is um is show people that I'm not just like going with 
whoever wants to pay to pay to play kind of thing. It's, yeah. that's not, mm -hmm. it's more of like, here is something that I really value and I think it will enhance, it enhances my experience mm -hmm. and I want you to experience that. And so that's, totally. so Nautique, Hyperlite, Jetpilot, uh, I use this communication system called BB Talking. I use it when I snowboard. It's amazing. Yeah, um, that those videos that you have, I've watched. Those are so cool. Well, it's really fun. It's so um, sick. Lead wake. Those are the bags that if I don't have people in the boat and I want to get a more juicy wake, throw lead wake bags in there. I've worked with performance ski and surf since over 25 years. Um, OWC. MWC, ECP, that's the cable parks that I work with. Um, mm -hmm. Moss Nissan, that's where I get my, my vehicles from. What um, color did you end up getting? Oh, I can't ask, sorry. <laughs> you can, but I don't know if I'm gonna tell. I mean, oh, I'll wait and find out. Yeah. <laughs> when, it, when, is this gonna, when is this gonna air? Uh, a, couple, like a couple weeks, I think. I don't know. I'm gonna have to wait. I'll have to wait, that's okay. <laughs> I'll try not to react, but what color do you think? What did I, I voted. What did I say? I think, mm, what color was your, what color did you have before? The charcoal. Okay, and then gray. I feel like you, pro you probably switched it up. I'm going to say black. I'm not mm. reacting. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I still laughing. don't know. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. We'll stay away from that then. I have to ask, is there anything in particular? Besides sorry, that? sorry the lighting like. Oh no, you're fine. I, the sun was coming okay. through. It's like this harsh light. Type. You're all right. It's a zoom call. So it, it's no big deal. Is there anything in particular that you are looking forward to for this year? Yeah, a couple things. Okay. Um, I mean, besides like, you know, having Rusty on the team, so we're going to get to do a bunch of the Nautique regattas together and the Hyperlight trips together. Like that's going to be definitely, there's something to look forward to. Um, also, I'm, uh, I I'm really ramping things up with YouTube. And yeah. so I've got some more things in store there. So if you guys Sweet. aren't subscribing now, go to my channel at Sean mm -hmm. Murray and uh, go subscribe and hit the notification bell and questions and comments below and all that stuff. Peace. Um, <laughs> but uh, I also, on my website, we're going to be launching some merch and that's spelled M-U-R-R-C-H. Do you get it? Merch. I get it. Um, nice. <laughs> and just a couple small items because I've had these things in my head for a while and, and products yeah. that like, that I like to personally use. Mm -hmm. And so at SeanMurray.com, we will be launching those in the somewhat near future. That is so awesome. Look this, forward to it. This one won't be there, but it's still oh. something. It's kind of fun, but no. That's sweet. That's not awesome. <laughs> well, uh, all right. I mean, yeah. that is all the questions I have for you today. And I'm almost out of apples, so. I, my teriyaki's cold, so I'm done eating. Do you not eat cold food? Mm, certain things, sure, but like rice, when it gets cold, it's just not that good. Like, I don't like sushi. No? Look, you just look so sad. I mean, okay. I wish I did. Yeah. I'm almost, I'm almost like kind of embarrassed that I don't like it. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, I recently found found out well, it was about a year ago. If I eat white rice, it knocks me out like Benadryl. <laughs> what? Look it up. It happened. I was like, why am I so tired after a poke bowl? I looked it up. White rice. Yeah. That Some is people. weird. Yeah. Huh. Um, Interesting. Well, we'll see how I feel in like an hour or two. Sorry, it's not. No, it doesn't affect everyone. Oh, um, it's like person specific? Yes. Interesting. So, and maybe it's just a placebo, but if <laughs> I have it, like I have, I'm like nap time. It's like I'm out, <laughs> like out. Um, huh. But um, what was I even talking about? Oh, cold food. I eat everything out of the fridge. I don't microwave. I just put into it. Like if we have leftovers, it's, if it's th two or three days of leftovers, whatever, a bunch of meals, it goes into one bowl and hot sauce or sauce on it. 
He Can heated up with some sauce, not the microwave. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Fun little fact. Mm -hmm. Random. You got all the food hacks going on today. Mm. I love it. Well, all right, Sean. We are uh, we are coming to the end of our lunch break. Well, I appreciate your time. And if you got anything else, feel free. But I appreciate me munch my snack in your ear. <laughs> and the fun questions and yeah, appreciate your time. Yeah, we appreciate you joining us and sharing with not only me, but everybody who's gonna watch this, uh, it's gonna be great, so. Cool, thanks well, again. Alrighty, yeah, thank you, Sean, so much. We are so, this was so awesome. Thank you, enjoy your ride. Peace. Later.